Thank you for tuning in to the Wealthy Optimist Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Hall. For the past several years, I've been a practicing mindset and personal development coach, guiding people of all ages to their empowerment and systematically teaching how to restructure your thinking patterns through my simple, practical methods and exercises that I developed in my book, Positive Power, 12 Steps to Mastering Your Mindset. I have a 12-week program that takes you through the 12 steps and helps you break free and create the amazing, positive, and abundant life that you deserve. The link is in the description for both my book and my program and can be found at www.wealthyoptimist.com. In this podcast, we go deep into self-empowerment, conscious growth, and breaking free from emotionally painful traumatic experiences. You will learn how to allow yourself to let go of hurtful past events and shift your energy to a positive wavelength. Think of this as your weekly dose of inner power and personal growth. We will explore emotional intelligence, conscious evolution, psychology, and relationships both with ourselves and with others. Let love be your center. Learn to embrace love, to give love, and to express gratitude freely. This is the power you have within yourself, and I'm here to help you unleash it. Now, let's dive into today's episode. Hey guys, what's going on? Sarah Hall here, The Wealthy Optimist. It has been a long time since I've done a podcast and I want to welcome you to the new year. It is 2021. Um, I have had a crazy couple of months um, and by crazy, I mean, it has been just absolutely insane. My life has been a roller coaster as I'm sure many of you have had a roller coaster of both emotions and stressful situations and highs and lows throughout these past couple of months and the past year that has been um, almost an entire year now of this pandemic upon us. Um, but these past uh, past two months have been wild for me. I went back to Canada for the first time in 18 months. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I'm wearing a kimono. Um, I was able to bring back all of my valuable personal prize possessions, I would call them, um, after 18 months of having my most special things in storage underneath my mom's house. Um, and some of my stuff at my old ex-partner's house as well too. Um, So I was actually finally able to go back to Canada for the first time in 18 months um, and get all of my stuff together. I went through a lot of different things, a lot of, first of all, emotions, um, and then a lot of uh, different stages, I think, throughout the uh, 32 days that I was in Canada. And I ended up wrapping up my life there and bringing back what I would consider my most prized possessions, um, things like decades worth of journals. Um, As you know, I'm a self-help writer um, and and a fiction author. Uh, So I have, I've been writing journals since I think my very first one that I got, I think I was like seven and or six or something. And I was able to bring all those things back with me. I was also able to bring back um, some really special things that my, when my older sister died, um, this is actually her kimono that she got in Japan. Um, and you know, there's, there's just some really special things that I was able to bring back with me and it ended up costing me 890 pounds to bring everything back. Um, but it looked like a lot of stuff in the photo. Um, but in reality, it wasn't that much stuff. Um, it was only five suitcases. Um, and it just is really expensive to bring things back, um, to another country, but subconsciously, the reason I'm talking a bit about this is because subconsciously, if anybody's ever moved to a new country, I moved here originally 18 months ago in March of 2019 with just a backpack and a rolling luggage and I had literally nothing. And within two weeks, I found my first apartment here in London and I moved into a one bedroom apartment by myself. I had absolutely no furniture, nothing. I got some help from somebody who got me a bed, brand new bed. Um, and then I bought a TV and then I bought, I ordered a couch and I slept on, um, or I, I used a a blow up couch, um, for about five weeks while my couch was delivered. And, you know, I had to build up an entire life here in London from zero to everything. 
And some people do that differently. I mean, they would have rented a furnished apartment perhaps, um, but that's just not my style. I'd, I'd rather have my own things in my house. So I started with an empty apartment and then you know added to it. And now I've moved, I've since moved. So I lived at that place for almost a year. And I've since moved and now I live in uh, uh, St. Catherine's Docks and um, I love it over here. It's just literally five minutes walk to Tower of London, which is my favorite place in London. I mean, it's a freaking castle that's centuries old. It's so beautiful um, and Tower Bridge is there and I can walk to all that and it's just, it's an amazing area. And I'm so blessed to have found a nice one bedroom apartment here, although it is tiny. Um, it is mine and I love it and I was able to bring back my stuff and subconsciously having having yourself spread out between two continents is very difficult on yourself. We have attention spans and our minds are attached to different objects, right? So imagine like a bunch of spaghetti strands coming off the top of your head and each of those spaghetti strands is attached to some kind of material object that you own, all right? Now, if you have, a, if you're a hoarder, for example, right, where you have an obscene amount of stuff, I'm talking like an actual hoarder, you know, like you're hoarding like old newspaper articles and newspapers and just a bunch of crap in your house, empty plastic water bottles, whatever, stuff like that. If you're like a real hoarder, you're going to have a lot of mental stress and duress from that. And that's like a compulsive kind of, it's a mental disorder, that state. But um, if you have you know, just maybe too much clutter in your house and you're just a normal, normal, normal person in quotation marks, <laughs> but you have a lot of clutter in your house, you're actually going to start to pick up stress and energy from having that clutter. In the same sense, if you have items in your possession that either don't belong to you or belong to somebody that gave you some kind of trauma or grief in your life, if you don't get rid of those things, even though maybe you don't see them, maybe you have them tucked away in a cupboard somewhere, you're gonna subconsciously always know that they're there and subconsciously you're attached to them. And we don't even know that this is happening, but it affects us and, and it affects our mental health in a, a bigger way than we realize. And so having my stuff spread out over two different continents for almost two years was very stressful. It was very stressful having my stuff at my ex-boyfriend's house, um, although me and him helped each other out. So we made kind of like a mutual agreement as to why he was looking after my stuff and I helped him out with the lease. So we had, it was kind of like a fair trade-off, but after, you know, 18 months, it was like, it, you really want to close that chapter of your life and knowing that your stuff is at their house just holds this like bond to that person that I was finally able to go back to Canada and just snap it right off. So, um, and for me, that was a huge relief because I was able to let go of an old chapter of my life and an old Sarah and move into a new era of Sarah. And I'm excited for it. And I'm really excited for it because I've got over the past couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, couple of months, I've gotten my uh, UK ancestry visa approved which took it was like a seven month delay um i've gotten my i've been able to go back and visit my family finally first the pandemic stopped me and then my ancestry visa stopped me um so that's why it had been so long since i'd gone back otherwise i would have visited sooner um and i chose not to go back at christmas last year but that was because i had personal reasons of some trauma that happened in my family that i did not want to go back at christmas time i wanted to spend that christmas healing and spending my first christmas alone in the new country that i lived in um and i i actually really enjoyed doing that for myself and so i went back to canada and it's been a roller coaster of emotions and I thought that I would hop on this podcast today with this very long introduction and update about what's been going on in my life and actually talk um, about transitions. And I know that we're going into obviously the new year, but nothing is actually changing. And that can be a scary thought for a lot of people. I know that a lot of people have this concept of the new year, a new you, right? So you think that it's a new year, you're able to like create this new version of yourself, you know, and, and for some reason, magically on January 1st, 
when the clock strikes midnight, that's when all of these new resolutions and goals and new things are gonna happen and you're gonna like magically suddenly have the motivation and desire and drive and ambition to achieve all of these things. It's just not how it works. There's no magical unicorn that comes in, flies in, sprinkles fairy dust on your life and on January 1st and decides that these new year's resolutions are gonna happen. It's only you that can make things happen in your life. And you can make things happen in your life any time of the year. It does not need to take place on January 1st. And a lot of the times, New Year's resolutions don't happen. I mean, I think the percentage, we'll say 89% of New Year's resolutions don't ever come into fruition. And that's because people just don't follow through with them. They get all hyped up on it, like all high and mighty hyped up on their, what they're going to achieve this year and all fired up and like write this list of this goals. And, and then after a couple of weeks, you know, maybe they don't achieve one thing and then they get a little bit disheartened and then they don't achieve another thing and they're a little bit more dispirited, you know, and then they don't achieve another thing. And next thing we know, they're like, ah, oh, fuck it. You know, what's the point? I'll give up. Right. And that's kind of the mentality that people tend to have. And the thing that is different this year with what the world is going through collectively is that we are in a huge transition and subconsciously we're all going through a lot. Like today I look put together and um, I feel mentally put together. Yesterday I thought I was having a mental breakdown. I was so distressed, so upset, so anxious. I was, it was, I was spiraling like, and on Christmas, which is today, what day is it? Uh, January 7th, Christmas, which was just like 12 days ago, I was wonderfully happy, elated to be home, you know, had a wonderful time with my boyfriend. I was happy, you know, it, it, things were great. And then I suddenly over the past like three or four days, I, my mental health just like, like plummeted. And when I, when I reflect on that, I, I realize that a lot of that has to do with the anxiety of the overwhelming anxiety that nothing is changing yet I feel the pressure to change and I don't know if you are going to resonate with that or not but there is this huge pressure that people put on themselves and that society puts on us for these new year's resolutions right I'm saying that in quotation marks for those that are listening on iTunes instead of my YouTube channel um, but if you want to see the video of this it's always on my YouTube channel um, we have this pressure of feeling like we need to make changes, but right now, globally, we are in a huge crisis and there is so much stress on every single one of us. And we have to be okay with that stress and we have to find what works for us because putting and I've done it already myself. I was like, you know what, January, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I've already fucked it all up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I have done some of it, but also like, I also just started getting super depressed and thinking, you know, it's the winter. The winter's never going to end. It's the pandemic. The pandemic's never going to end. It's actually just getting worse. In London, they're saying now like one in 30 people have COVID. Uh, my doctor's office sent me a text message saying one in three people have COVID symptoms and aren't aware of it and are passing it on. Um, when I got back, I was actually kind of feeling sick for like 10 days and I wasn't sure if it was like, I knew it was jet lag, but I wasn't sure if it was jet lag. And also I was sick with COVID again, even though I'd already had it twice last year. Um, but you never know because now there's the new variant. So there's just all these mental stressors and pressures and a whole bunch of stuff going on that our normal brains aren't used to during the new year. So it's not just about like new year's resolutions at this point. I just think it's so important to talk about transitioning into just a healthier mindset in general that's going to last long term. And that's what I wanted this podcast to be about is about finding a transition within this crazy turmoil and roller coaster of emotions and fear and stress that people have. I mean, there's so much fear mongering going on with the media, not to say that like there's anything invalid with what they're doing, but they're just putting so much pressure on people and it is causing a lot of stress and fear. And I 
have always been of the mindset. I, I can't remember who said it. I think it was um, Darren Hardy um, in the compound effect. I think, don't quote me on that. But he said that he like has selective news watching and that he's always done that. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's for me. So what he does is he only watches or listens to or reads news articles that directly affect his life. And the rest of it is just tuned out. And so he would like, for example, look at stocks that he's invested in or, you know, news related to something that happened in the area that he lives in that directly affects his house. You know what I mean? Like things like that. So for us, um, I noticed when I went back to Canada, like both of my parents, they have the news on in their house, like 24 seven, like they're always watching the news. They're watching the news in the morning. They're watching the 6 PM news. You know, they're watching every single nurse broadcast that's going on talking about the pandemic updates every single day. Like for me to go into that atmosphere where I don't want to be a part of all of that, like I know it's going on. I'm not obviously not, you know, being blind to the situation in the world, I'm well aware, I take all my precautions, but I do not need to be overwhelmed with it. But going into that atmosphere where they are constantly 24 seven watching the news and just being, having fear struck into them, stressed the living shit out of me. I was so stressed out in Canada. It was awful. And the and it, and it sucked too, because I wanted to like, be in Canada, have a really good time, see my family, you know, see my friends, catch up with people that I hadn't seen in years. And I couldn't, and I couldn't, not just because of the stress of what was going on, but also there were restrictions as soon as I got there that weren't there before when I had first arrived. Um, and then I had to quarantine for two weeks. During that two week quarantine period, it changed from me being able to see anybody I wanted to suddenly nobody was allowed to see anybody anymore. So there were huge restrictions. Um, people weren't allowed to leave their neighborhoods, you know. So everything just suddenly shifted and it stressed me out. And then I was stressed that I was there for so long because I felt a little bit trapped, you know what I mean? Because I couldn't properly do things with my family. I couldn't properly see my friends. I couldn't, you know, do a lot of the things I wanted to do or spend time with people that I wanted to spend time with while I was there. And that caused a lot of stress for myself. But I was able to make the transition and finally let go of an old chapter of my life. And while I was there, I was able to do a lot of diving into what, um, what things about being home caused me stress and caused triggers or triggered my, uh, I have CPTSD and generalized anxiety disorder. And I was able to figure out and pinpoint what kinds of things were triggering my PTSD, were triggering my stress, were triggering my anxiety. And I was able to um, work on those things for myself while I was there and then come back and to London, into my home here, and to assess those things and to get a better understanding of myself moving forward and transitioning into this new year about how I want to approach certain boundaries with certain people, um, how I want to continue working on my healing and my emotional evolution um, throughout the new year to create that, you know, new me again in quotation marks, because there is no like new you in reality, we're constantly evolving and always changing. Um, so yeah, I think that having to go through a lot of stress, and I'm sure that Anybody listening to this podcast right now can relate to the sheer amount of stress that happened over Christmas on varying degrees. I mean, whether it was because you weren't able to see your family or you were trying to organize things during COVID or people passed away or, you know, just a whole bunch of, I can't, like, I could go on and on. The list is endless. Whatever you went through during the holidays, just understand that everybody's going through different things and what you went through is just as valid as what somebody else went through and nobody's pain is worse or less than anybody else's pain and just because somebody else seems to have something worse off does not make you any less worse off than them or make your trauma any less traumatic you know so that's something I realized as well too because so a lot of the times too this is I'm getting a little off track here but when people are suffering from like depression or anxiety or something like that, there's a really 
unhelpful uh, tactic that people tend to do and they think they're being supportive and loving. And they'll say, you know, like, well, don't be so sad because, you know, look at what's happening in Syria or something like that. That is so not helpful. When you are, what you're doing in turn is diminishing that person's trauma or pain. You know what I mean? So for example, like another, uh, the specific example that I'm using is I was watching a TV show and um, I've had, I've been sexually abused in my life and um for some reason we were watching this tv show and uh, somebody in my life was sitting with me and they said well look your life isn't that bad this person on tv has and it was a, it was a, a movie character this person on tv is an orphan and their parents died your parents are both alive i was like why would you even say that like like what like i just i couldn't understand the how they thought that that was okay to like somehow shame my own trauma because a fictional character on TV had it worse than me. Do you know what I mean? And so I just, I think that my, my point of this podcast and what I want people to go into the new year with is to understand that we're all going through a, to put it in the best phrase possible shit storm roller coaster of emotions right now and we are all going to be dealing with it differently and we have to prioritize and give ourselves space to heal from whatever it is that's affecting us and if you suffer with some kind of mental disorder or some kind of anxiety or stress or depression that you already had prior to this pandemic happening, I am right there with you and can understand that you are even worse off than you were before and that it's spiking and that it feels overwhelming at times. Just know that you have survived 100% of your worst days. So everything that you've already been through in your life all of the stuff that happened over the holidays that you felt like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening. This is never going to end. You know, the last, it's been almost a year of the pandemic happening, you know, like it, well, it technically has been because in December is when they first found it in, um, in Wuhan. Um, all of this past year, you survived it. You're here. You're listening to this podcast. You're listening to something that is about self-help that is about your mental health. So kudos to you. Congratulations. You've made it through 100% of the absolute worst moments in your entire life. And you should be proud of that. And I'm proud of that. So instead of listing off a bunch of things that this year or in January that you're going to accomplish, why don't you take a different approach to it? Take this approach. Go through and write a list of the things that what happened last year that you're proud of yourself for getting through or for accomplishing even though it was a terrible year, there are still things that you can find within 2020 to be grateful for. I promise you that. There are things that you, maybe after some digging and some self-work and some probing inside there to see what it is, you'll find things that you have that you're very proud of yourself for accomplishing or for getting through or for overcoming. And I would like you to, instead of writing a to-do list of New Year's resolutions, which are probably just going to stress you out and cause you more stress, especially when you don't achieve them. I want you to instead write a gratitude list of things that you did in 2020 over the course of the year that you are proud of yourself for. So let's transition into the new year with a heart of gratitude, with a heart of solidarity together, with a heart of understanding that collectively the world is going through so much right now and for us to just take that one small step back and to assess our own part in it and shut out the noise of everything else and everybody else's opinions and everybody else's stresses and everything else that's going on in the news and the this and the that and whatever's happening to just shut it out and to just hold space for ourselves is so important and that's what I want you to do today. So go and do that. Let's transition into the new year with a heart of gratitude and I'm really excited for what this new year is going to bring to me um, and I'm really excited for what this new year is going to bring to you. Uh, over the 
course of the last two months, um, an outrageous number of you guys, thank you so much, have ordered my new book, which is 12 Steps to Mastering Your Mindset. This is my new book, um, 12 Steps to Mastering Your Mindset. That's me on the back there. If you're watching the uh, video, if you're watching, listening to the podcast, I'm showing you a photo of myself. <laughs> Um, but this, this book has, um, the 12 steps in it that I use to transform my life and to get to the place where I am at now. And that is a place where I am still growing and I'm still learning and I'm still, you know, aspiring to be different and to change and to help others. And I would love to get this book into as many hands as possible. So what I'm doing is I have created a website, wealthyoptimist.com where you can go and you can just pay the shipping and handling fee, which makes it cheaper than ordering the book from Amazon. And you'll get the book directly from myself where I ship it to you. And I actually am signing them and putting inside each book a manifestation that you want for 2021 to happen. So once you place your order, send me an email saying what it is that you really want to manifest um, and achieve or whatever you want to change into in 2021 something that you want to manifest and i'm going to write an inscription inside this and give you a manifestation technique specifically designed for yourself to use to get that for this year so that 2021 can be a fucking amazing year because we all deserve to have a great year after the absolute craziness that 2020 was i love you guys and thank you so much for listening and i will see you on the next one all right, everybody, that's all I have for you today. I am so grateful for you to be able to take this time for yourself that you chose to make the conscious decision to be here today, to listen to this, to share this message with somebody who else who could value from it. I really appreciate your reviews, your positive reviews, and sharing with the community what you valued out of this lesson today. If you can think of somebody who really needs to hear this message, please share it with them. There is nothing better for me than receiving a podcast or a video or a positive message from somebody that I love that totally changes my outlook on the day. So please pass this on forward to other people. And don't forget to come over to my website, www.wealthyoptimist.com so that you can connect with me and dive into your transformational journey with our 12-week program completely breaking free from your past traumas, from your past mistakes, from your past negative energies, and just being able to release all of that and move forward in our 12-step program that's accompanied by my book, Positive Power, The 12 Steps to Mastering Your Mindset. And I really look forward to having you join as part of our community. Thank you so much for taking the time today to do this for you. I am sending you all the love for a beautiful, wonderful day that you have ahead of you or a wonderful sleep if you're listening to this in the evening. Until next time.